machine like this, it's essentially automated. It's already running. Once it's programmed, you have a large plastic injection mold in here, which could have 30 different locations. Well, Ethan, either we got smaller or the machines are getting bigger because this is a pretty big EDM machine. But before we even get into the size, the movements, where this machine stands out, I'd like to address the audience watching right now that maybe still has a miscommunication or a misunderstanding of where EDM sits and what EDM actually does. Would you mind? I think you have a layman's term example for us, which is going to help me as well, but a layman's term example of, of a definition of EDM. Yeah. So. This is the most basic way I can put it, is if you're ever familiar with what happens when uh, lightning, uh, say, strikes a sandy beach, uh, what happens is the force of the lightning actually creates a crater in the sand, and actually a top layer of that sand becomes glass. This is actually similar to the EDM process. If you put that down on a microscopic scale, imagine that lightning bolt happening anywhere from two to 750,000 times in maybe a given second. The lightning is literally molting a crater into the steel, and then because of that heat and the force, it actually explodes it or implodes it apart, and the pieces float away in the dielectric oil. What's left is a crater. Now, when you make billions and trillions of these craters over time, it slowly um, and efficiently removes the amount of material, and you get less and less material as you're machining it away. So. Even though I went way too far into that, let's sum it up with again, EDM is a lightning storm on a micron scale. That is incredible. I have not heard that explanation before. Maybe some of you have, I have not. My mind is blown, interview's over, I'm out of here. I got, I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna do that to any of you because I actually have Ethan on camera and I think that's important to convey. All right. So we've explained what EDM is now. Now let's go into this machine and its movements because everyone can see it moving behind us, right? And to be fair, there's a lot of really great machines here today doing some quick movements, some, some pre precise movements, you know, kind of exciting to watch. Why is this one moving what people might consider a little bit slower? And what's the reasoning behind this demo? So, yes, this of course is the more slower of the machines that we have in the shop. But what we're showing here is we want to make sure that the machine is traveling to all corners of the table here. What, what we're showing is that this machine is large, yes, but also it can reach every corner of this table. What does that mean? When you load a large part in here, primarily a plastic injection mold, that means that you're able to hit every single part of this mold without having to reset it back up. So. When you buy a large machine such as this one, you're actually now, you're getting for your money the travel, and that's an ROI, I think. I like that, and, and there's an audience out there that sees a lot of EDM, and it's a much smaller footprint, but on, to on top of that smaller footprint, not every day do we see tool change as well, and I believe there's around 50 different tools that can be put in this. Yes. So I think the obvious question slash answer is, well, tool change, what does that bring? And I think that's obvious, right? It's gonna bring multiple tools and multiple capability and right. the ability to do more work on a bigger part that's gonna sit here because you have a bigger table. But have I left anything out? What, what's the real benefit to the audience watching going, well, I need to invest in that. It has a tool changer, it has a big table. It allows me to do all these different parts in a nesting cycle or one large part. Kind of all of that's in that, right? Yeah, you actually just said it all right there. Did I mean, do a good job? I'll, I'll try to sum it back up and to make it sound like I said it, but okay. that's absolutely what it is. With a machine like this, it's essentially automated. It's already running. Once it's programmed, you have a large plastic injection mold in here, which could have 30 different locations. Normally, since you have two electrodes per burn, this tool changer can handle up to 50 electrodes. Once you get this thing going, it's going to automatically change the electrodes out and take care of that entire cavity or that mold for you without a problem. Well, I have to ask you to kind of close this thing out, and Ethan, and, and you'll probably say something that's gonna blow my mind again, so I have another question for the audience as well. But Exeron, right? We've talked EDM now, we've talked about the demo that's running behind us, we've expressed the capability of what this machine can do. So now let's address an audience out there who currently has EDMs and might consider wanting to invest in an Exeron machine. Where do you guys stand out? What are some of the capabilities that really set you apart and amplifies that, that position in the market where people can succeed. Absolutely, so Exron is a newer name to the American market, although there are some out there. It's not as popular as some of the 
some of the bigger names that we're all more used to over the years. But what this brings is a lot of technology. This is definitely a high-end machine. This is absolutely made for mold building too. Like we said, large format machine, large tool changer. Now, what the Exron brings to the party is an adaptive pulse generator. So this generator reacts while it's burning in order to optimize the spark. So that means nearly every time you're going to get a perfect spark as it learns in real time how to stabilize itself. What does that mean? What that means is the most important thing in EDM, low wear. Low wear means less electrodes. Less electrodes means more money, less fabrication time. The other thing is that Oh, I just blanked out right there. Is there no, any that's way? All right. That any... was pretty cool though. Yeah. I had not heard that before either. <clears throat> so what else the machine brings is that it is ran on G and M code, which for some machines is popular, some machines it's not. But with G and M code, as long as you're somebody who understands that, you have an entire database at your hands to write programs at whatever level you want, whether they be basic or they be advanced. Exron though went ahead and took it a little bit further. Any cycle that you perform in this machine, whether it's a basic pickup cycle, it's a basic probing cycle, electrode measuring, um, pretty much anything that has a save button on that screen, you can save it for later use and then easily integrate it into your program. What that means is you can have unlimited main and sub programs that you're creating macros at an extremely fast rate now. Honestly, Ethan, this is, this is, I'm learning so much today, and I mean that. For the audience watching, one of my favorite things about this job is positioning myself much like yourself, where we want to learn about the machine. And Ethan, you have done an amazing job today. You yourself are a strike of lightning and someone we need in this industry. And we appreciate you conveying these messages so that we can learn better as a whole unit. Thank you, I really appreciate that. Absolutely, and thank you all for watching. If you've enjoyed this interview with Ethan, leave some comments in the bottom. Let him know that he did an amazing job, because I personally think so. Plus, if you have any additional questions for the YCM Alliance, for the Exeron team, or for Ethan, leave in the comments, I'll connect you. He'll probably be hyperlinked anyway, so you can connect with them as well, and start solving some of these problems in your machine shop through the EDM style of machining. Ethan, thank you so much, and I do appreciate you. Thank you very much.